I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the secluded town of Eldridge, nestled between the whispering pines of Northern California, local legend told of a fallen angel, an ethereal being whose fall from grace had left it wandering the earth, lost and tormented. The residents, a mix of old timber families and newcomers drawn by the town's rustic charm, treated the story with a blend of reverence and skepticism. However, for Deputy Sheriff Eli Mason, the legend was nothing more than a quaint tale. Until the night, everything changed. It began on a crisp autumn evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in strokes of orange and purple. Eli, a rational man with years of service under his belt, was responding to a routine call about a disturbance at the old Marston Place, a decrepit mansion on the outskirts of Eldridge. The property, abandoned for decades, was often the subject of break-ins by local teens and vandalism attributed to curious thrill-seekers and legend hunters. As Eli drove up the winding path that led to the mansion, the car's headlights cut through the thickening fog, casting eerie shadows among the trees. He noted the silence, an oppressive stillness that seemed to envelop the area, unbroken even by the usual sounds of wildlife. It was as if the forest itself was holding its breath. Arriving at the mansion, Eli stepped out of his patrol car, his flashlight piercing the darkness. The mansion loomed before him, its once grand facade now marred by time and neglect. The front door was ajar, creaking softly in the gentle wind. As he approached, a cold breeze whispered past him, carrying with it a faint, almost imperceptible murmur. Eli entered the mansion, announcing his presence. His voice echoed through the empty halls, met only by silence. He moved from room to room, his flashlight illuminating peeling wallpaper, shattered glass, and remnants of opulence long faded. It was in the Grand Hall, under the shattered remnants of a crystal chandelier, that Eli first heard it. A soft, sorrowful wail that seemed to seep from the very walls. Drawing his weapon, Eli followed the sound to the mansion's library, a vast room lined with empty shelves and a grand fireplace. That's where he found her. In the center of the room, amidst a circle of scorched earth, was a figure, ethereal and radiant, yet clearly anguished. She if such a creature could have a gender, was breathtakingly beautiful, with wings that shimmered with a light that seemed both otherworldly and extinguished. Her eyes deep and sorrowful met his. I am Azraela, she spoke, her voice melodic yet filled with an immense sorrow. I am fallen, cast out and bound to this shadow of a world. Eli, despite his training and skepticism, felt an overwhelming compassion for the creature. She told him of her descent, a punishment born of a rebellion born from empathy for humanity, and of her eternal connection to the land on which the Marston Mansion now stood. As she spoke, the air around them grew colder, and the walls of the library began to creak ominously. "'Why are you telling me this?' Eli asked, his voice steady despite the surrealness of the encounter. "'Because a greater darkness than my own descent stirs in the depths of this place,' Azriella replied." her gaze turning towards the shadowed corners of the library. Bound to my fall, it seeks to break free, to devour what light remains. I cannot stop it alone. Eli was about to respond when the ground beneath them trembled, a deep, menacing growl echoing through the mansion. The story of Eli and Azraela, the fallen angel, was far from over. As the darkness in the mansion stirred, ready to rise, they prepared to face whatever horrors were bound to the legend of the fall. The deputy's night had turned into a fight not just for his own soul, but perhaps for the soul of Eldridge itself. As the ground trembled beneath them, Eli steadied himself against a bookshelf, his eyes fixed on Azraela. The fallen angel's expression was grave, her luminous eyes reflecting a millennia of battles, betrayals, and sorrow. It begins, she whispered, not just to Eli, but to the mansion itself, as if comforting a dying friend. The growl deepened, reverberating through the room like thunder rolling over the hills. Dust cascaded from the ceiling, and the air grew thick with a palpable sense of dread. Eli, though shaken, felt the weight of his duty anchor his resolve. What do we need to do? he asked, his voice firmer than he felt. Azraela looked at him, her gaze piercing yet filled with a gentle sorrow. 
We must seal it again, she said, motioning toward the grand fireplace where the shadows seemed to churn and twist into sinister forms. My fall opened a doorway here, a breach between this world and darker realms. I have kept it sealed for centuries, but my strength wanes, and the darkness seeks to exploit my weakness. Eli nodded, understanding more than he thought possible. He had always felt a deep connection to Eldridge, a pull to protect and serve its people and land. Now he understood why. Tell me what to do, he said, stepping closer to the fireplace, where the air felt unnaturally cold. Azraela extended her hand, and from the tips of her fingers sprouted a faint light, weaving intricate patterns in the air. Hold the circle with me, she instructed. Focus your will, your desire to protect, feed it into the seal. Your connection to this land, your strength, can renew the barrier. Eli took her hand, the touch colder than ice, yet somehow comforting. Together, they stood in front of the fireplace, their combined wills focusing on the swirling shadows. The darkness seemed to sense their intent and surged forward, forming images of fears and nightmares trying to break their concentration. Outside, the wind howled, and the entire structure of the mansion groaned under the strain of the battle being waged within its walls. Eli could hear the distant sirens of backup he had called earlier, but he knew they would be of no use in this fight. This battle required something other than physical force. As they held the circle, Eli's mind flashed through memories of his life in Eldridge, the people he had helped, the community he had served, the natural beauty he had sworn to protect. Each memory strengthened his resolve, feeding power into the seal. Azriella's voice joined the chorus, a haunting chant that seemed both ancient and urgent. Her words, in a language Eli didn't understand but felt deeply, wrapped around them like a shield. The shadows recoiled, their forms dissipating slightly, but the growl grew louder, more desperate. Eli felt the energy surge through him, a connection to the land and its history, empowering him beyond what he thought possible. But as the seal began to strengthen, a sharp pain exploded in Eli's head, visions of darkness that were not his own flashing before his eyes. He saw Eldridge, not as the quaint town he knew, but as a dark land ruled by shadows, a future that could come to pass if they failed. Gritting his teeth, Eli tightened his grip on Azrila's hand, the fallen angel nodding in approval, her face etched with both pain and determination. Hold on, just a bit longer, she urged, her voice barely audible over the growing tumult. The story of Eli, Azraela, and the dark force beneath the old Harper mansion was far from over. As they struggled to seal the breach, the true nature of the battle revealed itself, not just a fight for the present, but for all possible futures of Eldridge. As Eli and Azraela channeled their combined energies into the seal, the darkness writhed and howled beneath them like a wild beast in agony. The fireplace, now a nexus of their confrontation, emitted pulses of cold that seeped into their bones. The room around them seemed to bend and warp, the walls groaning under the pressure of unseen forces. Outside, the storm that had been brewing now unleashed its fury upon Eldridge. Winds lashed at the old mansion, rattling the boarded-up windows and whipping through the broken panes. The eerie wails of the wind mingled with the cries of the dark entity they fought against, blurring the line between the natural and supernatural tempests. Eli's mind was a whirlwind of emotion and focus. Flashes of his past life, his days as a young officer, his moments of doubt and triumph, all flooded through him, each memory fueling his resolve. Beside him, Azraela's presence was both a beacon and a shield, her light growing stronger with every word of her ancient chant. Suddenly, the air in the room thickened, the darkness peaking in intensity. From the swirling vortex within the fireplace, emerged a shape, more solid than the shadows, but of the same essence. It was a manifestation of the darkness they battled, its form large and menacing, with eyes that glowed a deep, malevolent red. The creature roared, a sound that shook the foundation of the house, challenging the barriers of their protective circle. Eli, despite the fear that gripped him, stood firm, his voice joining Azraela's in the chant, instinctively knowing what was needed. Together, their voices became a powerful cadence that filled the room, their words weaving through the air, strengthening the seal. The creature charged, 
hurling itself against the invisible barrier they conjured. Each impact sent shivers through Eli's body, the force of the darkness immense. But with each blow, the light between them held, the seal glowing brighter, tighter, repelling the darkness back towards the fireplace. Azraela's face was lined with effort, her beauty marred by the strain of battle, yet her resolve was unbroken. It fears the light we create, she gasped, her voice strained. It knows its end is near. We must push forward now more than ever. Eli nodded, squeezing her hand tighter. He could feel the energy flowing between them, a torrent of power that grew with their determination. His entire being focused on the task, drawing on every reserve of strength he possessed. The room around them seemed to fade, the storm outside dimmed, and all that existed was the circle of light they held. The darkness, and the roaring creature that now seemed less certain, its attacks less frequent. As they reached the crescendo of their chant, a brilliant flash of light filled the room, blinding and pure. The creature let out a final, terrible scream as it was engulfed by the light, its form dissolving into nothingness, its presence extinguished from the room. Panting, Eli and Azriella relaxed their stance, the immediate threat gone, but both knew the danger was not fully averted. The seal on the fireplace held, now a permanent barrier, glowing softly with residual magic. Azraela looked at Eli, her eyes weary, yet grateful. You have saved more than you know tonight, she said quietly. No. But even as they caught their breath, the distant sounds of chaos from Eldridge reached their ears. The battle at the mansion was over, but the storm had awakened other forces, darker elements drawn to the town by the night's disturbances. Eli knew his duty was not yet done. He had to return to Eldridge to protect his town and its people from whatever had been stirred this night. The story of Eli and Azraela, their fight against the darkness at the Harper Mansion, was just one chapter in a longer saga. As they stepped out of the mansion, into the stormy night, they prepared for what was to come. The bond between them strengthened, their resolve unwavering. The night was still young, and their journey far from over. As Eli and Azraela emerged from the mansion into the storm-ravaged night, they were greeted by a scene of chaos. The wind howled mercilessly, bending trees to its will and hurling debris through the air with violent abandon. The town's emergency sirens wailed in the distance, a stark reminder of the widespread panic sweeping through Eldridge. Despite the exhaustion that clung to him like a second skin, Eli's sense of duty propelled him forward. He looked over at Azraela, her features illuminated intermittently by the lightning streaking across the sky. We need to get to the town. They'll need every hand they can get, he said, determination stealing his voice. Azraela nodded, her expression solemn. The darkness has been stirred, not just here but all around. What we faced tonight was only a part of it. The storm has awakened other things, things that should have remained hidden. Together they made their way back to Eli's patrol car, navigating the treacherous muddy path that led away from the Harper Mansion. The car was battered by the storm, but thankfully operational. Eli started the engine, the vehicle's headlights cutting through the darkness as they headed towards Eldridge. The drive back was tense, with each turn and hill revealing more of the storm's wrath. Trees uprooted, power lines downed, and homes damaged by the unrelenting forces of nature. But it was the unnatural occurrences that chilled Eli to the bone. The shadows that seemed to move against the wind, fleeting glimpses of figures in the periphery, and the oppressive feeling of eyes watching from the darkness. They reached the town center to find it in turmoil. Emergency services were overwhelmed, tending to injuries, securing areas hit by structural damage, and trying to maintain order as the panicked population sought refuge. Eli and Azraela immediately joined the efforts, helping where they could, their presence a calming force amid the chaos. As the night progressed, the storm gradually began to subside, the fierce winds dying down to mournful whimpers. But the peace was deceptive. An oppressive, heavy silence fell over Eldridge, the kind that presses on the ears and quickens the pulse. It was then that the real horror revealed itself. Without warning, the ground beneath the town center began to tremble. Cracks appeared in the earth, growing and spreading like wildfire through dry grass. From these fissures, a thick, black mist began to rise, swirling around the feet of the bewildered and terrified townspeople. Eli and Azraela exchanged a glance, a mutual understanding passing between them. This was what Azraela had warned about. The darkness, freed by the storm, 
seeking to claim Eldridge as its own. They stood together, facing the creeping mist as it gathered strength, forming into shapes that were at once formless and terrifyingly defined. The air was filled with the sound of whispers, thousands of voices speaking in unison, a language not meant for human ears. Eli reached for Azraela's hand, finding strength in her touch. They knew what they had to do. Drawing on the bond they had formed, the energy they had shared in the mansion, they prepared to make a stand, not just for Eldridge, but for all that remained unclaimed by the shadows. The mist encircled them, the whispers growing louder, more insistent. Eli and Azraela focused their will, their energy radiating outward, forming a barrier of light against the darkness. The battle was fierce, the outcome uncertain, but they stood unwavering, a beacon of hope in the encroaching night. As the first light of dawn began to break over the horizon, the mist suddenly recoiled, as if in pain. The whispers turned to screams, the shadows dissolving as the light grew stronger. With a final ear-splitting shriek, the darkness retreated, forced back into the fissures from which it had emerged, which sealed shut as suddenly as they had opened. Exhausted but alive, Eli and Azraela watched as the sun rose over Eldridge, its light banishing the last remnants of the night's terror. The town was safe, for now, but both knew that the darkness was not defeated, merely contained. They were custodians of a fragile peace, guardians against a threat that could rise again. And as the town slowly awoke to a new day, to a reality forever altered by the night's events, Eli and Azraela prepared for the next chapter in their unending vigil, ready to stand against the darkness whenever it dared to stir again. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 